The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right, let's get after it tonight. This Saturday night is going to be epic. We're going to talk about um, spiritual warfare and how it affects us. We want to just get into the basics and then we're going to get a little bit more intense towards the end of how it can progress. But this particular show, I do want to announce I'm out here with Austin Hamlick. Hamrick. Wow. Hamrick. Oh, man. <laughs> Licking ham. <laughs> Licking ham. <laughs> Hamrick at Cornerstone Chapel. Um, it's out here in Virginia. And we've been out here for a conference that he invited me out to yeah. for a young adults conference. And yes, we're going to speak to the high school group tonight. Yep. And then also uh, spoke at your guys' Wednesday night church service, which was awesome. It's an amazing church. It's a big compound. God's blessing this church. It's growing. It's good, solid Bible teaching. So if you're in the area, look them up and, and check them out and come say hi to uh, Dawson. But since we're here... I wanted to talk about spiritual warfare with you. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, there's, there's oppression yep. and there's possession. Yeah. And obviously more commonly is oppression versus possession. So let's oppression is um, where it affects your surroundings. Yeah. Where possession is where you can actually get demon possessed where it's inside of you. And you guys have probably seen a lot of supernatural films like Exodus and, yeah. and, and the grudge and all these different ones. So you know what that is, but we're not going to, we might touch on that a little bit later, but let's get into oppression because oppression, people could be getting oppressed and they don't even know. Yeah. Now question for you to start. Yeah. When I was a Christian, when I wasn't a Christian, I don't even remember being oppressed mm -hmm. i don't know because i was more you know I was, I was like partying and different things yeah but being a christian for sure you get oppressed a lot yeah let's get into it. what is it and how does it affect one yeah i mean i think first off i think you and i are on the same page as this that the the christian when you come into faith with jesus christ he fills you with this holy spirit and so I don't believe that the Christian can be demon possessed. No. When the Holy Spirit fills you, he's not sharing space. Yeah. And so for the Christian now as believers filled with the Holy Spirit, we now just deal with uh, demonic oppression. And like you yeah. said, it's just the, the, the outside attack of the enemy, whether it's with sickness. Uh, and, and again, I want to, I, I always want to blanket this conversation with, with balance. Not every sickness or illness is, yes. is uh, spiritual warfare. Yeah. Um, so sometimes we get into the extremes of everything is spiritual warfare or uh, nothing is spiritual warfare. It was, uh, I think, C.S. Lewis who said that the Christian can fall into two equal opposite errors concerning the demonic. One is to believe, uh, one is to disbelieve in their existence. Mm -hmm. The other is to believe and to have an unhealthy interest in, in the demonic. Mm -hmm. And so for those Christians who are just dismissive of Satan's influence in your life, that's an, that's an unhealthy extreme. Um, Satan, the Bible says, has been given limited authority here on earth. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He's not omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. Uh, but he has his team of demons that he sends out to oppress and afflict uh, believers, uh, to discourage the believer, to distract the believer, so that we're not effective for the kingdom. Um, and so one of the tools that Satan uses um, is... Uh, spiritual oppression and now the question is and it's a question that as i've just been walking with the lord for a number of years now it's a question i've often wrestled with is this spiritual uh is this a spiritual attack from the enemy is this oppression or is just this hey we live in a fallen broken world bad days happen you know oh, yeah i want to jump in here really quick i'm glad you said that because yeah. i was going to highlight something there's a lot of people I was listening to that. Who's that funny comedian guy? We were talking about uh, John Chris. John Chris. That's what I went we're to talking see about. Yeah. one of his shows the other day, and he was talking about spiritual warfare. Okay. And and he's like, yeah, you know, Aunt Betty, she's like, oh, I hit every red light. Oh, I can't find a parking space to church. Everything's spiritual warfare. Yeah. Yep. And he's like, Aunt Betty, like, no offense, but I don't think you're you're that high on the list <laughs> for for Satan yeah. to come after you. Yeah. To literally ruin everything everything spiritual warfare yeah you know there are there are also bad decisions we make that we right. put ourselves into that cause problems it doesn't mean it's spiritual warfare yeah totally but then there's actual 
spiritual warfare. Yeah. I think, um, I think maybe down to, to get into the nitty gritty of like, how can you tell that it's spiritual warfare, um, that the enemy is oppressing you? Um, I think you have to test everything with scripture. First yep. off, um, the, the new Testament says not every spirit is from the Lord. So you have to test the spirits to see whether they're from of God. And so, um, how do you, I guess, how do you test, a spirit? I guess just to get real practical to yep. test the spirits. If, if, if I have a thought in my mind, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to go to the word of God, line it up with the word of God. I'm going to be a Berean. Is it acts 17 acts 19 talks about the Bereans. When Paul came with the gospel, they searched the scriptures, this, mm-hmm. this town in, in Berea, they were called the Bereans. Paul gave them the gospel, and the Bible says in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, that they searched the scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was true. Yeah. So the, the first way that the enemy attacks us, I think, is, is in the mind. Mm-hmm. He puts thoughts in our head, and how can you distinguish, is this a thought from the Lord, is this a thought from just my flesh, or is this the thought from uh, the enemy? It's, well, I, I'm going to just bathe my mind in the word of God, and I'm going to seek the Lord. I know this is kind of basic and cliche, um, but it's like everything's got to go back to the word of God. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And so um, oftentimes, um, I heard Garrett Beeler actually say this, a good friend of, of both of ours, mm-hmm. that if the enemy can't get you through disobedience, he gets you through discouragement. Mm-hmm. And that's how the enemy often works in my life. Um, when the enemy can't get me through disobedience, that's his main MO, is he wants you to rebel against the Lord. He wants you to bel- rebel against the truth. And he wants you to live in sin and be trapped in sin. Yep. But when he can't get you that way, he often uses discouragement. discouragement. And he uses discouragement in my life very often. And so oftentimes I will battle through just different thoughts of discouragement. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not, I, I, and, I, and I attempt to seek um, a lot of affirmation mm-hmm. from people, mm-hmm. um, from maybe family members. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the enemy just uses that discouragement to um, just keep me bitter, mm-hmm. keep me frustrated. Mm-hmm. And so what, um, you know, oftentimes when I was discouraged, when I was frustrated, when I grew bitter, when I was dealing with uh, just um, thoughts, uh, different lies that the enemy was putting in my head, I dismissed the enemy because I I, I tend to err on the side of it's not Satan because Satan's not everywhere. And and he's 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 far more concerned with. Uh, bigger, better Christians than, than silly old Austin, you know? I, so I, I dismiss the enemy, and the Holy Spirit would just whisper uh, um, to my heart, press upon things in my mind as, as I was in the Word, that that those thoughts of discouragement, it's not from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so it's not from the Lord. Um, and Well, the, there's, the, de- there's demons. Yeah. Demonic entities that are not Satan, that are, that are under his control. There's demonic entities that I think whisper lies into your mind. Yeah. I think that's why our culture is so confused um, about gender, about sexuality, is because the Bible says that God is not a God of confusion. So what the enemy does is he attempts to do everything that everything that God wants to do in your life, the enemy wants to do the opposite. So God wants to bring clarity into your life through his word, mm-hmm. by his Holy Spirit. So what does the enemy want to do? He wants to bring in confusion into your mind. So he breathes in lies. That's why uh, Ephesians 6 goes through the spiritual tools that you got to guard yourself against. And one of those tools is the helmet of salvation. Why? You got to guard the mind. You got to put on the helmet of salvation. God loves you. Um, God has a plan for your life. Uh, God has designed you a unique, specific way, Mm -hmm. and the enemy wants to bring confusion in. And so I would chalk all of that confusion up to the enemy. I would chalk all up uh, the the discouragement that you're not loved, that you don't have a purpose. I would chalk that up to the enemy. But again, Ryan, it's it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that I think is a, a case by case basis. Right where you don't want to blanket everything as demonic mm-hmm. or spiritual warfare, yeah. but you don't want to dismiss it altogether. So you wake up one day, you say, God, I want to live for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you. And as you go about that day, if you have discouraging thoughts, you, you, you come down with illness, um, you just take it to the Lord. You say, Lord, I don't ne- necessarily know if this is spiritual warfare or not, but nonetheless, I'm going to bring it to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit at the feet of your word. I'm going to pray and seek you, Lord. And I, I pray against the enemy over my girls. Say, Lord, protect my girls from the enemy. I've got two daughters. Pray that for my wife. Lord, keep the enemy from her mind because the enemy loves to lie to our wives. Mm-hmm. So God, protect their minds. I always go to the mind and say, Lord, protect their minds because that's what the enemy lo- loves to attack. So um, 
to answer the question, how can you tell whether it's spiritual warfare, whether or not uh, you are being oppressed, um, I think it really is a case-by-case -case thing that you have to take everything to the Lord and just ask for wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And the way that you can, you, you start to, the, as you, you're a Christian and you start to see kind of how things play out, like Satan's never up to new stuff. Yeah. You can almost kind of predict, I was talking to Daniel the other night, last night actually, and we were just talking about how the enemy, it's, it's always whenever we go on tours. Yeah. He, he always tries to mess, like, there's always something with, you know, some static starts with the wives or something, you know, mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Well, I was talking to even another guy about touring the other day, too, is, um, who was it? Some, someone else I was talking about when he goes on, do, does ministry stuff. Him and his wife, they start fighting about something, and he's like, wait, what are we even fight? Wait, what are we even fighting about? Yeah, right. Like, wait. Well, like, where, like, you know, just like a little argument or whatever. Like, yeah. wait, what is even going on? And, and it's like nothing that gets blown out of yeah. proportion because the enemy starts bringing stuff in because you're going to go out on mission. Right. You know, or yeah. even when I was talking to Sonny Sandoval, his wife, and when mm. he would go out and do mission stuff, the, the enemy attacks his home with the kids yeah. and the wife. Yeah. So it's like the tactics are always kind of the same. Yeah, I think it's a great point because I think the enemy works in patterns. Like yes, he's, he, he's you can very, learn the pattern. He's very predictable. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while. Um, just in in being in the Word and praying and seeking the Lord, it takes a, a, a while to discern the enemy's patterns. But the more you walk with the Lord, the better able you're. The 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 better able you're. The the more able you're you're. I got into you're, it and I can't get out of it. Yeah, you're, you're able, you're you're able, able to, to learn, better yeah. discern and learn the patterns of the enemy. And um, so I think the enemy works in patterns. So I find in my own life, um, after I teach, mm -hmm. the enemy brings in discouragement. Yeah. Um, uh, in my marriage, like you said, my wife and I could be arguing about something so petty. And sometimes the, what we both have to do is just like pause and stop and just consider could this be the enemy? Let's like, let's just pray. Yeah. And, and we pray like even still like a little bit angry, you yeah. know? So we're like praying together and it's like, you know, we don't want to be doing this cause we're like, we're button heads right now, yeah. but it's like, we've got to bring ourselves under the control of the spirit and just like pray and just give like our like stubbornness over to the Lord. Like I gotta go, I gotta humble myself as the husband and just be like, I just gotta stop because what I'm so concerned about or the thing that's bothering me with my wife right now, like I just gotta pause right now and just recognize is this the enemy yeah. like just trying to de like to, to divide me and my wife right now so yeah when things I, I, i've called that out before i'll just be like yeah oh uh, we, we there could be like a you know an argument or whatever and it's totally the enemy and i'm like yeah. hey i'm all guess what in the middle of it yeah i'm like <laughs> i also i realize where we're at i'm like this is the enemy yeah this is the enemy do we keep going i'm like yep. forget this i'm I, like yeah. we'll, talk, we'll talk in a minute and we just and we both identify. Yeah, it is totally the enemy. Man. Like here we are. It's just, it's it's almost predictable. Yeah. I think for our for our listeners, like if you if you're a new believer and you're now hungry for the word, watch out for the enemy. If you're a single mom um, in the home with your kids and you're trying to raise your kids in the ways of the Lord, watch out for the enemy. If if you uh, if you're you're you and your spouse, you're married. And, and you're trying to make your marriage work because you want to honor that covenant before the Lord, watch out for the enemy. If you have a calling from the Lord to speak to your coworker at work and, and you have just this, this fire within you uh, and the Lord's laying that coworker on your heart, you want to share the gospel, watch out for the enemy. The enemy studies our lives. Uh, the, de the demons study our behaviors. They study our patterns. They study our lives. They, they study our marriages, they study our families, mm -hmm. they study our ministry. So when you are out on ministry, watch out for the enemy to be right behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you're, if you love your spouse and you wanna, you wanna raise your kids in the ways of the Lord, the enemy's, the enemy's right there. I don't say that to scare us, but rather just to prepare us so that we yeah. can recognize his patterns. Exactly, it's, it's, it's about recognizing and, and knowing the enemy so you don't get taken out. And the Bible yeah. clearly always warns about it. He gives us Ephesians 6. It's not like right. the Bible doesn't talk about this stuff. Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood enemies, but against principalities of unseen rulers. That's the New Living Translation. But it's, it's there's there's Lucifer, fallen angel, with one-third of the angels, it says that he took from heaven when they rebelled. And now they're here on planet Earth, and their whole mission is to destroy us. So they study us. 
they watch us and then they 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 work their way in they're they're filthy little demons and they work their way in but as you learn the word and you learn the patterns you could stop a lot of the the chaos from from happening in your life he's just they're just they're just disruptors yeah yeah know? absolutely they want to disrupt what god has going on in your life what are some other things that um what are some other things that you've noticed with with uh, oppression? Like, I mean, I, I mean, I could start it off. There was um, I was in New York City, and I was speaking at a church up there in upstate New York in Poughkeepsie, and there was a cop that was the youth pastor, and uh, he said, you know, I want you to talk to this student. He's he's uh, depressed. Um, they found some really dark stuff on his phone. Mm. Um, he was basically, he was basically, you know, looking up. I, I don't even want to say it now because I identified the place, mm-hmm. but it was gnarly. Like he was gonna do some gnarly stuff mm. that you can go to jail for, and dark stuff, and 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 hurt people and stuff. And basically, what happened is, um, I said bring him in. So we started talking to him, and I sat down with this kid at the table, and I, and he was just kind of like depressed, looking down, and I'm like, I'm like trying to talk to him, he's not really listening too much was listening but just kind of not engaged and I said I just looked at him I said look at me I said dude look at you I go you you look depressed you're not even happy you look miserable Mm -hmm. I'm like do you want to live this life I go I don't know what you're into but basically if you're watching pornography and you're you're involved with dark stuff this is you're being oppressed and and you feel depressed you feel suicidal you want to do bad stuff to people because you are being influenced by Satan or whatever. When I say Satan yeah. is demons, yep. you're being influenced by Satan's crew. Yeah. Okay. And I said, if you're tired of this life and you want to be set free, Jesus can set you free and break this off. I go, I know you don't have a demon in you, but you are being oppressed heavily. Like you're just dark in a dark place. And for whatever reason, the lights turned on and he's like, I want to be set free. Yeah. So, and he didn't, he didn't know what, what I knew about him. And I just, I prayed over him. I said, and first of all, you got to repent of your sins. Give your life to Christ. And I, I prayed for him to get me filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I prayed over him. I said, in Jesus' name, I pray that you break off any connections, any strongholds, any, any doorways that have been opened to the supernatural realm mm-hmm. that has allowed dark entities around him to bring him down in confusion and heaviness and darkness. And when we prayed, literally... Everything changed. A couple minutes later, he was happy. And then I was talking to his parents, and his dad's not a Christian. Huh. And his dad goes, what'd you do to my son? Because his son was now, he, this kid would isolate himself. Yeah. He would come to a youth group, he'd sit in the corner, he was like low energy. Yeah. The kid was running around eating pizza, chasing the other kids. <laughs> like literally, it was like, there was a night, night and, and day, day difference, difference where the dad that's not a Christian at all, doesn't believe in God, goes, what'd you do to my son? Like he's totally different now. Wow. What'd you do? And I said, well, I go, I prayed. He gave his life to Christ. He, he repented of his sins and we prayed for him to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I prayed for the doorways and stuff to close in his life. He's being oppressed by wow. darkness. That's why he was acting like that Yeah. and thinking crazy. He's being the mind games and everything that Satan was doing. And that was a testimony to his dad that was not a Christian. Like he was like, what basically he's like, what magic did you do? Right. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't do magic. Yeah. No, I, I, I talk and minister with our young adults here at Cornerstone and um, we'll have lots of conversations about spiritual warfare, spiritual oppression. How can you recognize it? I was talking with this one student in our young adults ministry who was like, I've been feeling super depressed, super, um, super like um, just jittery, just like restless, anxious, anxious, anxious. very anxious. That's anxiety, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anxious, flustered, just like unsettled. Yeah. And I just, you start digging and asking questions like, well, what's uh, like, what's your week been like? Uh, or what, what's like your routine? Just like trying to dig into like, um, what are you doing that could possibly be causing anxious thoughts? And, um, a lot of it is like material and books. And so we found out that the student was reading basically like this very new age type book. Mm -hmm. I was like, get get rid of it, get out of the house witchcraft, and, uh, get out of the house, stop reading it, just dive into the word and see if there's any difference. And so the student was like, all right, got rid of the book. Every night before bed, instead of reading that new age type book, started just reading the word, anxiety was just out. And um, and so you look at the fruit of the spirit in the book of, is it Galatians? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love, Six. joy, peace, patience. Mm-hmm. 
what are the ways the enemy tries to oppress us? It's everything opposite of the fruit of the spirit. So the fruit of the spirit is love. Enemy loves to oppress you with just thoughts of anger and hatred. Um, love, joy, peace. Um, the enemy loves to oppress you by bringing confusion and chaos into your life. He doesn't want that peace that the Holy Spirit provides. And so oftentimes you can spot spiritual oppression in your life or in someone else's life when it's just a list of the opposites of the fruit of the Spirit. Like, I don't have any joy. There's, there's, there's no peace, only anxiety. Um, there's, there's no love. There's only anger, bitterness, and frustration. Um, in Acts chapter 8, um, I love the book of Acts because in the book of Acts, you see the kingdom of darkness interact with the kingdom of light, mm -hmm. like all throughout the book of Acts. Yeah. Like if you want to know what the Bible is about, the Bible is a book about two kingdoms. There's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of light. And whether you, you know this or not, you are a part of one of those two kingdoms. That's what the Bible yeah. says. Yep. Colossians 1.13 says, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness yes, my favorite. and has yeah. brought us Love into the kingdom of his of his son. Yeah. A few other verses, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, uh, Satan, who is the God of this world, that's lowercase g, Satan, who's the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. Uh, another verse, Ephesians 4, 18, their minds are full of darkness, talking about unbelievers. So again, this is kingdom of darkness. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they've closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. So the Bible all throughout scripture presents, hey, there's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of light. Yep. And in the book of Acts, you see uh, these two kingdoms battling and waging war all throughout. So Acts chapter 8 Peter runs into this guy called Simon. He's Simon the sorcerer. Yep. And the Bible says that Simon actually believes and he gets baptized. But he follows Peter around and he sees Peter doing this miraculous stuff filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says, hey, I want that power that you have. And, and, he, and he offers him money. He says, what, what can I, how can I buy this power? And Peter rebukes him. He says, you can't buy this power. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Holy Spirit. And he rebukes him and he says, I can see that you're full of bitterness. So that's another yes. way that we're oppressed is just with like the enemy comes against us and he fills us with just bitterness. And that can be a, f a stronghold in our lives at times where we're just like holding on to um, past hurt and it just lumps up in just this big ball of bitterness that we have towards maybe a parent or a sibling yeah. or whatever. Anyone, anyone. Yeah, anyone. Wow. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's very true. And then you think about what Paul said, right? He said, uh, I think it's Ephesians where he says, don't let, um, don't let, uh, anger get a foothold. Yeah. Well, in, in my new living, I, I speak out of the new living translation. Yeah. It says, don't, <laughs> don't let the anger get a foothold. Yeah. A stronghold in, in your, in your life. And it's any of that stuff, anger, bitterness, resentment. Um, we know we were talking about at lunch about how my old assistant, she she shared her testimony so I could say her name. Her name is Sonia. Yeah. She shared it at our church, but she was in an emotional relationship. Right. And that opened a doorway to demonic activity where she ended up getting possessed. She was wow. married and got an emotional relationship with a guy at work. Mm. And then that opened the door and Satan creeped in yeah. through that foothold, stronghold, and for whatever reason, God allowed a demonic activ entity yeah. to go in. That's why. But I can tell you right now, there was, uh, when she started talking to this person, there was oppression going around that okay. the enemy, well, there had to be some, before the demon could enter her, yeah. there was a supernatural oppression going around, messing with her mind to deceive her to actually do that. Yeah. It starts with that, the oppression, yeah. which led to the possession. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a whole nother thing. That's why you don't wanna, you wanna keep these doorways closed. Yeah. And I think honestly, like to, to, to encourage the believers who are listening, um, if you feel discouraged or oppressed by the enemy, yeah. that might be a sign that you are are filled with the Holy Spirit and on mission by the Lord. Like sometimes, where when the enemy is close, um, it's it's not always because um, your life is all full of darkness. It might be the enemy knows that the Lord is using you, and uh, so he wants to discourage and distract you from what God is calling you to do. So sometimes we're like the enemy is attacking. It's like, Hey, maybe I'm doing something right because I'm upsetting the enemy here. Yeah. yeah. And that can be an encouraging thing. Cause I know like yeah. when the enemy tries to discourage me, 
you know, I feel, I, you know, I, I become a victim of, in my own life. And it's like, hey, the Lord is doing something in your life by his Holy Spirit. And he's using you and he wants to use you. He has a, a great plan and purpose for your life. But that's why it's happening. But that's why it's happening. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah. yeah. People that, people, most of the people that get left alone, they don't ever feel anything. We go look at their life. Are they doing anything for Christ? Right. Yeah. No, they're not. So the enemy's like, right. they're hey, good. good. They're not, they're not really doing anything. Yeah, I don't so need to, what, I don't need to touch you. Well, well, let's worry about the people that are actually advancing the kingdom. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay, so we were talking about uh, spiritual warfare, um, oppression. We talked a little bit about uh, a possession. What are some other ways? So the enemy, let's just talk about the ways the enemy can mess with you. So he can yeah. mess with your mind. The, the Bible talks about fiery arrows, right? Going yep. in your mind, fiery darts going in your mind. Um, thoughts. Um, uh, he could... Uh, he can influence you. Uh, he can influence you and, and bring people around you. Yep. Yeah. He can bring people around you to speak lies in yeah, your that's life. Huge. He yeah. can bring people that aren't walking with God to, to be around you and to influence your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. It's like your friends and people that you're surrounded by, you yep. know, you are what you eat, right? Or you, yep. you what's that say that they're saying like you become who you surround who yourself you surround with. Yourself yeah. with. The enemy, believe it or not, can commission people that they don't know yeah. and influence people to come around your life and get you derailed. Yeah, there's a saying, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yep. So that's that's a huge deal, especially in the younger generation where they feel the pressure to fit in. And so they're doing all the stuff. And so they surround themselves with people who are being used by the enemy to influence you just to rebelling against the Lord. So you have to choose your friends wisely. You have to put up boundaries. There, Honestly, there should only be a very select few of people that you've given license to speak into your life. Um, we're all about uh, having a ton of friends. And if I have a ton of friends, it means I'm accepted and I'm popular and stuff. Forget it. Like, yeah, you should be well acquainted with a ton of people at your school. Sure. Be salt and light. But the people that you allow to speak into your life will shape your future. So you got to get around good, godly people who love the Lord, who are going to encourage you in the word, who are going to say, hey, let's pray together. You're going through something. Let's pray. Let's take it to the Lord, mm -hmm. who uh, aren't going to gossip. And you and you don't gossip. They don't gossip. You get around people who love the Lord. Surround yourself with good, godly people, because that's going to shape who you become in the future. Yep. It's going to shape it, you know, the, the friends that I've surrounded myself with. They encourage me in my marriage. Mm -hmm. They encourage me uh, in my ministry as a dad. And so it is key to find good, godly friends who uh, love the Lord. That's huge. Words have power. You know what I mean? And it's true. If whoever you're surrounded with, it's what you become. Whatever you're listening to. Yeah. It goes from music, stuff you're watching. Totally. Your friends. All that, it, it affects. Even though you don't think it affects you, it does. I mean, we go on tour. We'll be hanging out. We'll meet someone new on, on a trip and... We're all hanging out together and everyone's cracking jokes and talking a certain way. Next you know, they start picking up on the, on the, the little, the lingo, the little, lingo, little yeah. isms and they're saying the same thing because we've been around each other for like 10 days straight. You know, I mean, I'm going to start growing my hair out and parting it down Dude, the middle. Let's go. Let's you know, go. <laughs> it's about time. I'm going to start working out. So get <laughs> all right, look, we got a minute and a half left. I Maybe mean, less actually. Um, I do want to plug, uh, go to the YouTube, Ryan Reese official subscribe and uh, get all the past shows. We talk on all different topics. You can go to the whosoever's movement. We got products that support our mission. We're a group of evangelists that take the, the gospel globally into the public schools. We speak at churches. We do conferences. We, 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 we do it all. We're, wherever God opens the doors, we go and we want to speak and we want to um, uh, encourage people and break down uh, the basic truths of, of, of Christ and the plans that he has for you. I have a book out. It's called Kill the Noise, Finding Meaning Above the Madness. Just look it up. You can buy it everywhere. Obviously, it's on Amazon, but Target, Walmart, Barnes & Nobles, all those, all those places. It's there. Purchase it. It's a discipleship book. Um, it's not. It's all about God, or else I wouldn't even be telling you about it. it. It will inspire you. It will encourage you, and it will answer a lot of questions that are going on in your faith. It'll really, um, it'll really help you out. That's, that's why I wrote it, is to help people out you could check that out as well and um yeah we just wanted i want to thank you for tuning in every single week and joining us on these saturday nights or if you're joining us on all the podcast formats wherever you're finding us thank you share we want to encourage people to walk with god because he has a plan for them peace more 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now, back, back, back to The Ryan Reese Show. All right, I am back in studio with Austin Hamrick. We are out here at Cornerstone Chapel in Virginia, and it's been awesome since we've been out here. we got the portable studio and we are uh, can't wait to go to the next location, wherever that leads us. I know Peru is, is coming up in the future for the conference and some schools, and we're constantly booking uh, several events across the United States. So don't forget to book us, and we're going we're gonna to continue to go into this conversation about spiritual warfare. But this last half, we want to go into something that you call guard. Yeah. Right? And what is guard? So guard is just really keeping it practical. How do you guard against spiritual warfare? Uh, the G is you got to get saved. I mean, that's uh, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about there's two different kingdoms, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. Yes. And you might be listening, be like, hey, I'm not a Satan worshiper. I have not signed any contracts with the devil. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you have not turned from sin and trusted in Christ, you're part of the kingdom of darkness. Yes, no matter and so what. So you got to get saved. That's Colossians 1.13. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and he's transferred us. You got to be, you got to transfer kingdoms. Mm -hmm, all right. Mm -hmm. You got to transfer kingdoms. How do you transfer kingdoms? By trusting in Jesus Christ to bridge the gap, reconciled us back to God. So you got to get saved and that's the G and we can go into that and in just what does it mean to be saved? How do yeah. you turn from sin? Yeah, let's do it. Let's How go into it. I mean, repentance is just about face. Mm -hmm. It's acknowledging and agreeing with God. I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. And you are a great savior. And we can all we can all say we're all dirty sinners. We're all dirty sinners. I and, love how you say that. Mm -hmm. We're a bunch of dirty sinners. Mm -hmm. I've been adopting that saying. I've been telling all my young adults, mm -hmm. we're all a bunch of dirty sinners. Mm -hmm. And we gotta we gotta just like come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone loves saying oh, oh, nobody's perfect, mm -hmm. and I'm not perfect, and we make mistakes. All right, those are just little baby ways of saying I'm a dirty sinner, mm -hmm. and I messed up, and I've I've fallen short of God's glory, and God has a holy standard. God is holy. And he calls us to be holy. Well, how can we do that? It's by just first acknowledging our sin. Mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. That's the first step is just coming to that acknowledgement and agreement with God mm -hmm. that I'm a sinner and you're holy. And so I'm going to turn. I don't want to live for myself anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I've tried living for myself. I've tried to make decisions on my own without hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't work. No. And the enemy loves to reel us into his trap that you're the king of your life and you can make decisions fine without God. Mm -hmm. And and sin is fun for a season. That's what the Bible yes, says. Yes, it does. But it only leads to destruction and death and anxiety and depression and loneliness and isolation. What do you do? You turn from sin. You acknowledge that you're a sinner. You turn back to the Lord. Um, I was just going to I was gonna say that, you know, when I say dirty sinner, it's because these sins are things that, we don't want to do, yeah. and we don't even like the effects of them. Like, if we could all be honest with ourselves, yeah. we don't like when we're sinning. We don't like the feelings and the consequences and stuff it brings. Yeah. So when you acknowledge you're a dirty sinner, you can't do things right because no matter what, you're gonna mess up sooner or later. The good news is when you put your trust in God through the work of the Holy Spirit, that dirty sinner life starts changing. Yeah. And it starts becoming less and less and less and I say and I like to say dirty sinner also because you know I don't ever sometimes when people become Christians they they feel like they've arrived and they have it all figured out we'll never have it figured out we're a sinner at heart and this is why we have to have that continual relationship and continue to put our trust in Christ because we go through different seasons we do really good and sometimes we do really bad yeah you know what I mean it's because we're dirty sinners yeah <laughs> But with God, we're forgiven and his grace is there and he literally starts removing stuff out of our life and you literally become a new creation. Yeah. So that's so number one. That's number one. I mean, that's the very first thing. How do, how do I guard myself against spiritual warfare? Yeah. Well, stop acknowledging yourself as king. Yep. Igno and come out of the kingdom of darkness, come into the kingdom of light. And so you got to get saved. That's the G in guard. Mm -hmm. The U is use the spiritual tools of Ephesians chapter six. Because God doesn't leave us on our own to fight our own battles in this battle of spiritual warfare. He gives us spiritual tools so that you and God is use them. Use the spiritual tools. And so I just pulled up Ephesians 6 just so I could read the different spiritual tools. 
And Paul writes, he says, finally, my brothers, my sisters, he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The NIV says the devil's schemes. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, Mm -hmm. against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And verse 14 gets into the armory. It says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. All right, that's key, Ryan, you, as you know. Truth. Because we're living in a culture where culture says truth is relative. Your truth is your truth. Mm-hmm. My truth is my truth. Um, there's, no, I, there's no my truth. There's no your truth. It's, it's the truth. It's found in the, in, in, in the word of God. Mm-hmm. And so it starts with girding your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking shield, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, as you mentioned. Verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. So um, this is our only offensive weapon. Mm-hmm. It's the only offensive weapon we need. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yep. That's why Jesus, when he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, what did Jesus do every single time he quoted scripture? Word of God. And so that, what does that tell me? It's like, well, I got to get in the word of God and I got to know the word of God. I have to memorize the word of God so that it's in my mind. I, and I use this in a good way. I want to brainwash myself with the word of God. Mm -hmm. I want to wash my brain. I want to cleanse my brain with the truth of God's word. And that's one thing I would just encourage everybody is just to memorize scripture. And, um, one thing my wife and I did was um, we went through Genesis Revelation, and I got this from David Guzik. Um, read one chapter a day, and then write one sentence on the chapter you just read. Go go through the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover. Read a chapter, write a sentence. Read a chapter, write a sentence. And it's just a practical way to get God's word into your mind. Um, if that sounds too daunting, um, then just cool idea. memorize one verse a week. Mm. At the end of the year, you'll have 52 Bible verses. I mean, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, start with Jesus wept. Mm-hmm. And that, that, there, that's your verse for the week. You got it down. Easy. It's simple. Mm-hmm. But get verses into your mind. Write them down. I'm a very, um, I'm a visual learner, so I got I to gotta write. Yeah. Um, I got to write after I read. So I'll, I'll write scripture down, or I'll write a sentence, or I'll journal, and, um, and write scripture, and then just put it up on your fridge, or on your mirror when you wake up so that the first thing you're seeing is the word of God. And so these are just small little practical ways Mm -hmm. to get God's word in front of you at all times Mm -hmm. so that you can get God's word in your mind and then you can spit scripture out. And that's how you fight the enemy. And that's how you fight the enemy. The scripture. My my grandma, when she was a missionary growing up in uh, in the 40s or 30s and she went to Columbia and she used to sing this song to me. It was a Salvation Army song. It says, come in... uh, Come and join the army. The Salvation Army has a right to beat the drum, the tambourine, the banjos, to make the devil run. So come and join the army. Get your gospel gun. Shoot it at the devil if you want to see him run. And that's basically what Jesus was doing. He was firing off scripture at the devil. Yeah. And that's and it. he ran. And that's, that's the same thing that happens with us. But yeah. like you can't, you know, like I was talking at your church service is that, you know, we are, and you quoted the Holy Spirit verse that talks about that is like the Holy Spirit can only pull from what's in us. Right. So like if we're like a magazine, empty magazine, we load ourselves with verses. That's the ammunition. Yeah. And then through the power of the Holy Spirit, it pulls the verses and then we fire them off at the devil with our mouth. Absolutely. And that's literally the gospel gun. Yeah. And the, that's, spiritual, the spiritual tools. Yeah. And the sword, the Bible is, a, is, is, is the ammo case. Yep. 32, nice. 33,000 verses. I like so that's that. That's a lot of rounds. Yeah. But it's also called the sword of the spirit. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what size you have. You could have a little pocket. Bible sword, or you could have a ginormous sword. <laughs> a large they all print. do the same amount of damage. Yeah, I like that. So you got to use the spiritual tools. That's yep. the U in guard. The A is avoid evil practices. First Thessalonians five twenty two says avoid evil practices, and um, it really is just as simple as as that. In um, you can't be a professor of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer in Jesus but be living in opposition to what Jesus tells us to do. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a double-minded 
person. Hypocrite, it's, it's poser. A, the hypocrite, yeah, it's a poser. <laughs> and I'm guilty of, of being a poser and yeah. a hypocrite and all of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but First Thessalonians 5.22 says, avoid evil practices. And the reason that's a part of the, the, the guard is because when you are indulging in sin, in, in habitual sin, and you are indulging in evil practices, you are opening up doorways for the enemy to have more influence in your life. Mm. Um, I was just in Books A Million with my three-year-old the other day, and we were just looking through the aisles, looking through toys and different stuff. And and uh, right next to Dora the Explorer, you know Dora the Explorer, that TV show yeah. for kids? Right next to Dora the Explorer was a Ouija board. And I'm like, what is going on? Oh like my. Dora and a Ouija board. Like this doesn't, this, this. I started like playing like weird games with myself. Like Dora's no longer asking like, where's the map, kids? She's now like, where's the Ouija board, kids? Wow. And so it's just like, it's become so normalized in our culture. Like Dora's hanging out with a Ouija board. That is now, insane. It was just so weird. So, you know, this is how normalized the cult practices have become in our society. Now we're books a million with my three-year-old. Ouija board is in the same aisle as Dora. It's just become normal, you know? I want to I actually hit also on, that's yes, it is normal, by the way. That's insane. Um, the other thing I want to hit on is what you said is a habitual sin. So there's their sin that we, we because we're, we're weak humans, so we mess up. Right. But God, forgive me for my sins. I didn't mean to do that. Habitual sin is where you continue, you make a practice of it. Right, yeah. So there's two different kinds of sin. Yeah. It's, it's the one that you're like, like, for instance, I'm going to Vegas. And I'm going for a bachelor party and I'm a Christian, but you know, I'm gonna get a little loose this week and you know, I'm going to ask, I already know what I'm about to do out yeah, there. I'm gonna, uh-huh. we're going to go get drink some drinks. We're going to end up in a strip club. You know, we're going to go gamble we're, and whatever else comes our way, you know, maybe you smoke a little weed, pop some pills. I don't know. Maybe take a little ecstasy pill, ecstasy pill and go out to the club. But when I come back, I'm going to ask for forgiveness and God will forgive. Yeah. It's me. like premeditated. That's yeah. yeah. So that's not. That's not like where you like, oh, I messed up. I missed the mark. Because sin means miss the mark. Yeah. Like if you're shooting, a, trying to hit the bullseye with a, a gun or, right. or an arrow. And yeah. You're just off a little bit. That sin is we're trying to do what's right, but we just mess up. Yeah. So. And that's what First Thessalonians five twenty two says: avoid evil practices. Right. Like where it's like a practice where it's either premeditated. If you're going to Vegas. You're going to practice. Right. Or it's just <laughs> this habitual thing where you just like continuing to indulge in that which you know is wrong. And you are opening up portals or doorways yeah. for the enemy just to influence you, to oppress you, if you're not a believer, to possess you. Mm-hmm. And so a part of the the guard here, the A is avoid evil practices and don't be a hypocritical Christian. Again, we're all guilty of it, myself included, of you know having one foot in the word and being a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. but then just uh, living for self. And um, that's not that's not to be part of the life of the believer yeah. you're not going to be sinless but you should be sinning less as you mature and walk yes. with the lord sinning less. That's so a good one. avoiding evil practices is a part of that guard that's how you guard against spiritual warfare the more i want to look like christ and pursue holiness and put aside the flesh and and crucify the flesh with the lord um you are limiting the devil's power and influence yeah. in your life so and whatever whatever you feed the most you know as you, you probably said this illustration a few times but um, I was thinking about like in LA, you know, where I'm from, they, uh, you know, you have like the gangsters that have like the pit bulls and they, they, they train them, they put them on treadmills, that big chains around their nice. neck yeah. and, and it's, it's illegal dog fighting is what it is. Sweet. They illegal. I do not partake no. just for the record. Yeah. Um, but I've seen and I've heard, but what happens is, so you have to say you got this pit bull that you're feeding meat. It's on a treadmill. It has like huge chains around its neck to make it strong. Right. And, and they train these dogs. But then if you have another pit bull that you don't feed at all, he's not on the treadmill, you don't even feed him. He just has maybe a little bit of water. Basically, you put those two in to fight, what's going to happen? The one's going to just destroy yeah. the other one. And that's the difference between our flesh. Whatever we feed the most is going to dominate. Yeah. So yeah, if you're totally, practicing yeah. doing bad stuff, you're feeding the flesh. Yeah. You're, 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 you're feeding it. It's growing stronger and stronger versus if you get your body appetites and you hang them to the cross, yeah. like you just said with Christ, hang them to the cross and you crucify the flesh and the spirit lives. Yeah. So it's very simple. You have either have a strong spirit or a strong flesh. What's dominating? Yeah, that's what, what is it, Galatians 5 or 6? It talks about that. It says that there's this battle um, between the flesh and the spirit. Mm-hmm. And um, and and the the 
more you feed the spirit, the spirit will dominate the flesh. The more you feed the flesh, the flesh will dominate the spirit. And there's this constant battle waging war so within us. They, they hate each other. They're, they're fighting yeah, with each other. Exactly. Totally. Enmity. Yeah. yeah. Just, and that's literally, and that's from written from Paul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which Paul's like, I'm like, that guy was like an amazing Christian, but he's like, I'm the sinner of all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but it's true. They fight. So we have to put that into perspective. Yeah. And that's, um, that's also going back even to the beginning of the conversation of talking about the, um, oppression, the oppression that, that influence comes in to make you want to go after the things right. of the flesh. But then you have the Holy spirit. We're possessed with the Holy spirit. He's, he's, he's inside of the Holy spirit. Yeah. Power is inside of us. Yep. And his job is to deny the flesh. Yes. And yeah. These are the two forces. You got the oppression, the enemy and you got the work of the spirit. Yeah. Paul says Galatians, I think it's five sixteen. So I say to you, walk in the spirit. And how do you walk in the spirit? It's just being in the word, being in prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to fill you. That's my prayer every morning is like, Lord, I can't even do today without you. I need your Holy Spirit. Yeah. So fill me and, and empower me and give me all that I need today so I can please you and walk with you. And that's a daily prayer. So that's the A. Yep. It's avoid evil practices. Um, so you got you gotta get saved. Use the spiritual tools in Ephesians 6. Avoid evil practices. The R is resist the devil. This is James mm -hmm. 4, 7, and 8. Resist the devil. What I find super funny is um, in order to resist the devil, number one, you got to acknowledge that there is a devil because yeah. that's part of our, our society is just this, um, well, I acknowledge maybe that there's evil in the world, but is there this one source of evil being the devil? I'm not so sure. You know, I read this Barna research study a few years ago that uh, said four out of every 10, four out of every 10, that's 40% of professing Christians. So we're talking about Christians here. Don't believe the devil's real. They don't, <laughs> they, they, they believe that the devil is merely a symbol of evil, but not an actual being. Wow. 40%. 40% of supposed professing Christians believe. believe that the devil is just a symbol. So if you believe the devil is a symbol and not an actual being, you're, you're already going to lose that war. Yeah. So you have to acknowledge that the devil's an actual being. Now, he's not God's equal opposite. Yeah. Sometimes that's what Christians think is that God is God and Satan is God's equal opposite. Creator and creature. Yes. God creator created. Creator and creation. Yes. God created Satan. He's a, he's a fallen angelic creature and uh, he has power. Second Corinthians 4, 4 calls him the God of this world. Mm -hmm. But again, that's lowercase g. But God has allowed Satan to have limited power and authority here on earth. And, um, and so you have to acknowledge that, that, that Satan, um, formerly known as Lucifer, he's an actual being. And he hates you. And he hates your marriage. Mm -hmm. um, he hates purity. Mm -hmm. What God creates. He's filthy. Satan wants you to worship. And this was, we talked about this in Romans 1. Mm -hmm. um, what God creates, Satan wants you to worship. Mm -hmm. um, and we have more protection for the spotted owl than the baby in the womb. Why? Because people have worshipped the creation rather than the creator. But that's Satan's MO in our universe is he wants, he doesn't need you to worship him as long as you worship anything but the true God. Exactly. Anything. So he wants you to worship self. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to worship creation. And so Satan uses God's own creation um, as uh, just idols that we just worship. Um, so you have to recognize that you have a real enemy who wages war against your soul. That's what Peter says, that you have an enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. He's not talking about a sign or a symbol of evil. He's talking about an actual being. You know, it's, I was thinking about how, you know, there's a whole um, global warming or, uh, no, not, not, not global warming. Um, climate change? Climate change. Yeah. I'm like, climate well, it change. Well, used to be called global warming. Yeah, yeah. But global now warming. it's like climate change. They're, they're changing. Like the climate's always been changing. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah, exactly. So the climate change, and I started thinking about it, looking at it, and then, you know, I, this guy, Tom Hughes, he's like a big prophecy guy. He's a, he's a Calvary Chapel pastor from California, okay. somewhere in California, Southern California. And he was in one of his uh, Instagram videos the other day, and he was just like, climate change. And he, and he pulled that verse. Yeah. Uh, you know, they will worship creation more than the creator yeah and the climate change is now a religion yeah yeah it's a religion like people are like gluing themselves yeah i saw pastor like, jack Gibbs like, talking about light this. themselves on fire for i mean i think someone like burned themselves up in like some country okay for climate change like yeah it's a literally religion that people are laying in the streets they're ready to die for for this thing 
it's which nuts, is crazy because that verse all it was is that it's that verse in the bible that was written you know yeah thousands of years ago it's nuts so how do you resist the devil this is james 4 7 and 8 it says submit to god therefore resist the devil and he will flee from you a lot of us know the latter half of that verse resist the devil and he will flee from you but we forget the beginning of that verse which says submit to god submit. So there's no resisting the devil until you submit to the Lord. So true. You can't resist the devil if you are not submitting to what God's revealed will is to you in the scriptures. So if you're not submitting to God, what does submitting to God mean? Just means living in obedience, reading the word, matching your life up with it, living in obedience. So you can't resist the devil until you first submit to the Lord's ways, submit to the Lord's will, submit to the Holy Spirit in your life. That has to take place first. Submit to God resist the devil yep. and he will flee from you. You have to submit. So you have to submit in surrender. order to resist. Surrender. Surrender you your life. Submit and surrender in order to resist. So that's the R in guard and then the D is draw near to God. That's the rest of that verse in James 4, 7 and 8. It says draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Yeah. It's a beautiful promise in the Bible. It's a promise for you. When you draw near to the Lord, the Lord will draw near to you. Mm -hmm. um, when you seek the Lord, um, you will be found, uh, he will be found by you. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord calls us believers to draw near to the Lord. Like God is a good dad. He loves you. Uh, you're his child. If you have turned from sin, you trusted in Christ. Welcome to the family of God. Yeah. You're a child of God. And now he wants you like, I'm, I'm a, you're a dad. I'm a dad. I'm, I'm a dad of two girls. And I want them to come to me with all their scrapes, with all their problems, with all their issues. They fall, they get cut up. Like when they come to me, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like they're coming to me, why? Like, cause I'm their dad. It's like a, it's a privilege and a joy to be able to parent my two little girls. And when they come to me with their problems, like this is awesome. Like this is what I love. And that's just a little taste of God's love and joy when we go to him, like with our issues and our problems and our pain and our hurt and our experiences, when we draw near to the Lord, oh, he, it, he finds great joy in reciprocating and drawing near. Mm -hmm. Now, God is the initiator. He initiates. We respond. But now in this relationship, God wants us to draw near to him and continue to walk with him. When we draw near to God, he draw, draws near to us. And what James talks about in James 4, 7, and 8, he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And then he goes into this weird stuff. He says, wash your hands, you dirty sinners. Cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. He says, humble yourselves before the Lord. So he, he expounds upon what drawing near to God looks like. Mm -hmm. And drawing near to God looks like humility. When we humble ourselves and we stop thinking that we're all that, mm -hmm. like I'm nothing, yeah. I'm nothing without the Lord. Yeah. Like the Lord doesn't need me. No. I can't be a good dad or husband without the Lord. Yeah. I can't be in ministry without the Lord. Like I don't matter. Yeah. I don't matter. But it's Christ within me that, that gives me worth and value. Mm -hmm. And when we draw near to God by humbling ourselves and cleansing our hands and stop being double-minded, means having like a split personality. Like yeah. I'm one way with some people. I'm yeah. one way with the Lord. Yeah. And it's like, cut that out. Like just humble yourself before the Lord, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. And that's humility is a way you guard yourself against spiritual warfare mm -hmm. because the enemy loves to use pride. Yeah. It's the first sin in the whole universe. For like, forget Adam and Eve. First sin was pride. When, when the devil wanted to be like God and then God kicked him out because Satan rebelled against the truth, but it was his pride. So when we humble ourselves, we look more like the Lord. When we're filled with pride, like I'm all that, we look more like the father of lies, that's Satan. Yeah. So drawing near to God looks like humility. So that's the guard, get saved, use the spiritual tools in Ephesians 6, avoid evil practices, resist the devil, draw near to God. Five ways that we can guard against spiritual warfare so in our the, lives. So the key is just to basically ask for forgiveness, humble yourself. I like that in, in part of James, that's, that's, that's amazing. It's really simple, but the hardest part is just doing it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, it's simple. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it's actually just like, yeah. you got to do it. Right. It's the hardest part. Yeah. the pride and all the other stuff yeah. comes, comes along. But the, the, the flow of the Holy Spirit will come through that. Right. Well, that was an amazing show, you guys. Uh, we, again, we are in Virginia. Yep. Out here with Austin at Cornerstone Chapel. So what, what city is this in? So we're in Leesburg, town of Leesburg. We're Leesburg. in the county of Loudoun County. Loudoun County's got a lot going on with uh, public school systems, school board. Really? Um, 
LGBTQ agenda. We got to get into the schools. Got to get into the schools here. Yeah. Need, hey, let's plan it. Absolutely. Let's, let's let's come out and let's invade the public schools. Let's do it. We love it. That would be amazing. Um, I did see some of the videos of that stuff, uh, books and stuff being read that your dad was talking about. Yeah. On social media, yeah, it's we're wild seeing stuff the same stuff. On. Well, go to uh, make sure you go to YouTube to uh, Ryan Reese Official. Subscribe, grab those radio shows, send them out to your friends. I also have a website, ryan-reese.com, that have all the radio shows and the Gospel of John and all kinds of cool stuff. We have the whosoevers.com. You can go there. You can donate to our movement. Our movement is a group of evangelists that tour the public schools and bring the gospel to a lost and hurting and broken world. People that have never heard about Jesus that are open to it. They just need to hear it. And what's that verse that says, blessed are the feet of the messenger that go. How will they go unless they're sent? So pray for us. Send us. We will go. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in every Saturday night. And next week we'll be at a new location somewhere else doing something else. I love you guys. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.